Hey guys, welcome back to another Iceborne video. Sorry if I don't sound too energetic, but after not having internet for a week and losing power several times while trying to edit and render this video, only to have it corrupt my files and making me start over again, it's taken a toll on me. Anyway, today I'm going to be going over some endgame master rank switch axe sets, which is the weapon you guys voted for, so let's get straight into it. The first set, and arguably the best switch axe in the game, is for the Golden Crescent, or Crescent, whatever the hell, the Golden Crescent, which is the Gold Rathian switch axe. This is going to be a recurring theme for a lot of weapons, if your weapon has a Gold Rathian tree, odds are that it's probably the best in its class, because they all have a few things in common. High raw, high white sharpness, natural affinity, high poison, and some sort of slot. So pretty much literally anything in the game, even if it's immune to poison, you'll probably be fine and better off just using the Gold Rathian weapon. I have mine augmented for a health region augment and a status up, because that way you get to 420 poison and it's lit. I also have it slotted with an attack jewel. The armor is also something you're gonna see in a lot of endgame sets now, and that is the Master's Touch set bonus via the Teostra Helm, Gloves, and coil, since these have the best perks or slots. The chest piece is going to be the Brute Tigrix chest, and the boots are going to be Jangaruga. The charm is going to be the challenger for charm. The jewels I'm using are an expert 4 jewel in the helm, a critical vitality jewel and an attack jewel in the chest, an attack plus 4 jewel and an enhancer jewel in the gloves, an enhancer vitality jewel, another enhancer jewel, and an attack jewel in the coil, and finally a tenderizer vitality jewel and two critical jewels in the boots. If you're asking yourself, how did you get all those jewels, or want to leave me the billionth comment asking me for a jewel farming method, it's easy. Just pick up your phone, call the country of Japan, and then suck on a nice long cap cock, and they'll give you all the attack 4 jewels you could dream of. Anyway, as a whole, this would give you max attack boost, crit i6, and agitator 4, maxed out health boost, crit boost, weakness exploit, and power prolonger, two spare levels of blast attack that we get from the coil, and heat guard, and also one level of latent power. With the natural affinity of the gold wrath, the NSA, you only need crit 6 to get 100% affinity with weakness exploit, which lets us sneak in a few extra levels of attack boost. If you've come across certain thumbnails on YouTube and don't like attack boost anymore, or you just don't have the jewels, then you can slide on a challenger maintenance jewel instead of an attack plus 4 jewel and that'll work just fine. You can use this exact same set with the Ruiner Nergi SA, but that one does need crit i7 to get its affinity to 95% with weakness exploit. So just swap around the jewels, should be easy enough. I recommend the Ruiner SA if you plan to farm Nergi for whatever reason, or if you're up against something like Kushala because the Elder Seal does come in handy quite a bit. It also has dragons, so if you need to fight Ashur Rathalos, Rathian, Pink Rathian, or or regular Rathalos, this is probably better as well. If, for some godforsaken reason, you don't feel like running those, or you prefer a truly raw essay, then you can swap out the charm for the Handicraft Charm 4 and use the Shara Ishvalda Switch Axe. You'll also need to slot in a non-elemental boost deco, which will see you drop the Agitator 2, and only one level of Power Prolonger. This one technically still does more damage on a per-hit basis than the other two, simply because it can reach purple sharpness. But once that drops, it's Pupu Kaka. So be sure to stay within that purple and sharpen if you need to. Use Wet Fishman Plus and map them to your radial menu so you can sharpen in one swipe and without having to sheath your weapon. Or don't. You're the one spending the same time it takes to get a bachelor's degree sharpening in the middle of a hunt while I'm out here with my hot fish fin waifu eating elder dragon poon. Remember kids, the more time you spend sharpening your sword, the less time you spend putting it inside someone. That's about it for the meta sets. If you're a Reddit or Discord sweat lord, you can click off this video now, but subscribe though before you go. Otherwise, I have a few extra fun sets to show you that might suit your unorthodox playstyle. The first one is a paralysis set. This one uses the Barath Dozer 2. This one has a bit of white sharpness, two level 2 jewel slots, paralysis files, and 360 hidden paralysis. This is also a master's touch set, but there are two ways that you can play with this thing. Since the paralysis is hidden, you can use it and slot in a non-elemental deco to bump up its raw, and have the occasional paralysis from the sword attacks and of course your ZSD spamming. Or you could also release the paralysis, which sounds like a order from a questionable 17th century doctor conducting some questionable experiments. But it is quite a lot of paralysis that you can apply with all of your attacks. The value you'll get from freeing this depends on how many non-sword slash file attacks you can land, which from experience, at least the patented way that I play, is not a lot. So it's not really worth releasing it in my personal opinion, but that's just for me. But say you're in a group Having that a bit of extra paralysis might be worth it, since it could mean having one extra para, or it could just save you time in building up 
the paralysis. It would also help if another teammate of yours is also running para, then you can both kind of play off of each other. But like I said, that's up to you to decide. The last that I have for you is an exhaust sleep set using the Jagger Switch Axe. This thing has a decent chunk of white, 500 hidden sleep, two level three jewel slots, and exhaust files. I have mine slotted with an enhancer jewel and a handicraft jewel. I also have an Oregon mod on it, and for the augments, I just chose a health regen, and then I just closed my eyes and randomly chose whichever one my cursor landed on. For this set, we're going to be using the Savage Joe chest, gloves, and coil for the set bonus Stamina Thief Secret. The helmet is the Dober Helm Beta Plus, and the boots are the Meta Garuga Boots Plus. I feel pretty clever, to be honest. I don't think anyone has ever used these boots before in any kind of, like, meta set, and I think they're pretty underrated and pretty broken, to be honest. I have a Drain Release Jewel in the helmet, an Expert Plus 4 Jewel, a Tenderizer Jewel, and a Critical Jewel in the chest, a Critical Vitality Jewel, and an Expert Jewel in the coil, another Expert Plus 4 Jewel in the gloves, another Critical Vitality Jewel in the boots, as well as two more Tenderizer Jewels, and the charm I'm using is the Handicraft Charm 4. As a whole, this would give you maxed out Critical Eye, Handicraft, Stamina Thief, Free Element, Critical Boost, and Weakness Exploit, two levels of Health Boost, one level of Power Prolonger, and Speed Eating. For those of you who don't know, Exhaust Damage dealt to a monster's head, deals KO damage, so not only will you be putting bitches to sleep, you do that whenever you talk anyway, you'll also be stunning them. The exhaust damage is great because there will be a lot of times where the monster just stands there, salivating, and it's basically just a free DPS window for you. Putting monsters to sleep is a great form of CC as well, obviously, and a way for you to land a double damage heavy slam, which is a new move in Iceborne for Switch Axe. And if you want to know the secret to landing it every single time, it's actually pretty easy, just don't be bad. Other than that, if you have a female character, like most of you degenerates do, be sure to unequip any layered armor you may have on your chest piece, because reasons. As you might have told from the gameplay, I'm actually a Korean Switch Axe god, and my playstyle is focused around spamming the ever-living shit out of zero-sum discharge. Or as I like to call it, zero skill discharge. If you're using Rocksteady and Temporal, otherwise known as Crutch Mantle Plus and Crutch Mantle, all you need is to amp up your sword mode to get your ZSD ready, and then you basically have an uninterrupted Pepega DPS window until your mantles run out. That's why skills like Tool Specialist and Power Prolonger are so strong and so important. Power Prolonger lets you stay in your amped up state for much longer, which allows you to land more discharges, and Tool Specialist lets you have your mantles back so you can spam them that much easier and safer. That's why it's also important to have a health augment on your switch axe because any damage that you take while you're grappled onto the monster with your rock steady on as long as you're discharging you can just heal it back up and almost back up to full pretty much every single time because it just does that much damage anyway that's it for me guys expect some more build videos soon so subscribe if you're into that and remember to drop a like on the video if it helped you out or you found it useful or entertaining i'd like to thank my patrons for continuously supporting me seriously i am very poor i appreciate it and i appreciate you for watching, so thank you all, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.